The United States Central Command or CENTCOM is a theater-level unified combatant command of the U.S. Department of Defense. It was established in 1983, taking over the previous responsibilities of the Rapid Deployment Joint Task Force RDJTF. The CENTCOM area of responsibility includes the Middle East, including Egypt in Africa, and Central Asia, most notably Afghanistan and Iraq. The command has been the main American presence in many military operations, including the Persian Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm, 1991, the war in Afghanistan, and the Iraq War, 2003 to 2011. As of 2015, CENTCOM forces are deployed primarily in Afghanistan, Operation Freedom Sentinel, part of NATO's Resolute Support Mission, 2015 present, Iraq and Syria, Operation Inherent Resolve, 2014 present, in supporting and advise and assist roles. As of the 28th of March 2019, CENTCOM's commander is General Kenneth F. McKenzie Jr., U.S. Marine Corps. Of all six American Regional Unified Combatant Commands, CENTCOM is among the three with headquarters outside its area of operations the other two being USAFRICOM and USSOUTHCOM. CENTCOM's main headquarters is located at MacDill Air Force Base, in Tampa, Florida. A forward headquarters was established in 2002 at Camp Asalia in Doha, Qatar, which in 2009 transitioned to a forward headquarters at Al Udiyat Air Base in Qatar. Topic: History. The command was established on January 1, 1983. As its name implies, CENTCOM covers the central area of the globe located between the African, European and Indo-Pacific commands. When the hostage crisis in Iran and the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan underlined the need to strengthen U.S. interests in the region, President Jimmy Carter established the Rapid Deployment Joint Task Force RDJTF, in March 1980. Steps were taken to transform the RDJTF into a permanent unified command over a two-year period. The first step was to make the RDJTF independent of U.S. Readiness Command, followed by the activation of CENTCOM in January 1983. Overcoming skeptical perceptions that the command was still an RDJTF in all but name, designed to support a Cold War strategy, took time. The Iran-Iraq War clearly underlined the growing tensions in the region, and developments such as Iranian mining operations in the Persian Gulf led to CENTCOM's first combat operations. On 17 May 1987, the USS Stark FFG-31, conducting operations in the Persian Gulf during the Iran-Iraq War, was struck by Exocet missiles fired by an Iraqi aircraft, resulting in 37 casualties. Soon afterward, as part of what became known as the Tanker War, the federal government of the United States reflagged and renamed 11 Kuwaiti oil tankers. In Operation Earnest Will, these tankers were escorted by USCENTCOM's Middle East Force through the Persian Gulf to Kuwait and back through the Strait of Hormuz. By late 1988, the regional strategy still largely focused on the potential threat of a massive Soviet invasion of Iran. Exercise Internal Look has been one of CENTCOM's primary planning events. It had frequently been used to train CENTCOM to be ready to defend the Zagros Mountains from a Soviet attack and was held annually. In autumn 1989, the main CENTCOM contingency plan, Oplan 1002-88, assumed a Soviet attack through Iran to the Persian Gulf. The plan called for five and two-thirds U.S. divisions to deploy, mostly light and heavy forces at something less than full strength apportioned to it by the Joint Strategic Capability Plan, JSCAP. 
The original plan called for these five and two thirds divisions to march from the Persian Gulf to the Zagros Mountains and prevent the Soviet ground forces army from seizing the Iranian oil fields. After 1990, General Norman Schwarzkopf reoriented CENTCOM's planning to fend off a threat from Iraq, an internal look moved to a biennial schedule. There was a notable similarity between the 1990 internal look exercise scripts and the real-world movement of Iraqi forces which culminated in Iraq's invasion of Kuwait during the final days of the exercise. U.S. President George Bush responded quickly. A timely deployment of forces and the formation of a coalition deterred Iraq from invading Saudi Arabia, and the command began to focus on the liberation of Kuwait. The buildup of forces continued, reinforced by United Nations Security Council Resolution 678, which called for Iraqi forces to leave Kuwait. On January 17, 1991, U.S. and coalition forces launched Operation Desert Storm with a massive air interdiction campaign, which prepared the theater for a coalition ground assault. The primary coalition objective, the liberation of Kuwait, was achieved on February 27, and the next morning a ceasefire was declared, just 100 hours after the commencement of the ground campaign. The end of formal hostilities did not bring the end of difficulties with Iraq. Operation Provide Comfort, implemented to provide humanitarian assistance to the Kurds and enforce a no-fly zone in Iraq, north of the 36th parallel, began in April 1991. In August 1992, Operation Southern Watch began in response to Saddam's noncompliance with UN Security Council Resolution 688 condemning his brutal repression of Iraqi civilians in southeastern Iraq. Under the command and control of Joint Task Force Southwest Asia, coalition forces in this operation enforced a no-fly zone south of the 32nd parallel. In January 1997, Operation Northern Watch replaced Provide Comfort, with a focus on enforcing the northern no-fly zone. Throughout the decade, CENTCOM carried out a string of operations. Vigilant Warrior, Vigilant Sentinel, Desert Strike, Desert Thunder I and, II, and Desert Fox — to try to coerce Saddam into greater compliance with U.S. wishes. The 1990s also brought significant challenges in Somalia as well as from the growing threat of regional terrorism. To prevent widespread starvation in the face of clan warfare, the command responded in 1992 with Operation Provide Relief to supply humanitarian assistance to Somalia and northeastern Kenya. CENTCOM's Operation Restore Hope supported UNSCR 794 and a multinational unified task force, which provided security until the UN created UNOSOM 2 in May 1993. In spite of some UNOSOM 2 success in the countryside, the situation in Mogadishu worsened, and the significant casualties of the Battle of Mogadishu ultimately led President Bill Clinton to order the withdrawal of all U.S. troops from Somalia. Throughout the decade following the Gulf War, terrorist attacks had a major impact on CENTCOM forces in the region. Faced with attacks such as the 1996 bombing of the Kobar Towers, which killed 19 American airmen, the command launched Operation Desert Focus, designed to relocate U.S. installations to more defensible locations such as Prince Sultan Air Base, reduce the U.S. forward footprint by eliminating non-essential billets, and return dependents to the United States. In 1998 terrorists attacked the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, killing 250 persons, including 12 Americans. The October 2000 attack on the USS Cole, resulting in the deaths of 17 U.S. sailors, was linked to Osama bin Laden's al-Qaeda organization. From April to July 1999, CENTCOM conducted Exercise Desert Crossing 1999, centered on the scenario of Saddam Hussein being ousted as Iraq's dictator. 
it was held in the offices of Booz Allen Hamilton in McLean, Virginia. The exercise concluded that unless measures were taken, fragmentation and chaos would ensue after Saddam Hussein's overthrow. The September 11 terrorist attacks on New York and Washington, D.C. led President George W. Bush to declare a war against international terrorism. CENTCOM soon launched Operation Enduring Freedom to expel the Taliban government in Afghanistan, which was harboring al-Qaeda terrorists and hosting terrorist training camps. Exercise Internal Look has been employed for explicit war planning on at least two occasions, Internal Look 90, which dealt with a threat from Iraq, and Internal Look 03, which was used to plan what became Operation Iraqi Freedom. Iraqi Freedom, the 2003 United States invasion of Iraq, began on 19 March 2003. Following the defeat of both the Taliban regime in Afghanistan, the 9th of November 2001, and Saddam Hussein's government in Iraq, the 8th of April 2003, CENTCOM has continued to provide security to the new freely elected governments in those countries, conducting counterinsurgency operations and assisting host nation security forces to provide for their own defense. Beginning in October 2002, CENTCOM conducted operations in the Horn of Africa to combat terrorism, establish a secure environment, and foster regional stability. These operations involved a series of special operations forces raids, humanitarian assistance, consequence management, and a variety of civic action programs. The command has also remained poised to provide disaster relief throughout the region. Its most recent significant relief operations have been a response to the October 2005 earthquake in Pakistan, and the large scale evacuation of American citizens from Lebanon in 2006. On 1 October 2008, the Department of Defense transferred responsibility for Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Kenya, and Somalia to the newly established Africa Command. Egypt, home to Exercise Bright Star, the Department of Defense's largest reoccurring military exercise, remained in the CENTCOM area of responsibility. In January 2015, CENTCOM's Twitter feed was reported to have been hacked on the 11th of January by ISIS sympathizers. This situation lasted for less than one hour, no classified information was posted and none of the information posted came from CENTCOM's server or social media sites. However, some of the slides came from the federally funded Lincoln Laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In August 2015, intelligence analysts working for CENTCOM complained to the media, alleging that CENTCOM's senior leadership was altering or distorting intelligence reports on the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. In February 2017, the Inspector General of the United States Department of Defense completed its investigation and cleared the senior leadership of CENTCOM, concluding that, "...allegations of intelligence being intentionally altered, delayed or suppressed by top CENTCOM officials from mid-2014 to mid-2015 were largely unsubstantiated." In January 2018, Turkey urged the United States to remove its troops from Syrian city of Manbij, saying that otherwise they might come under attack from Turkish troops. However, former CENTCOM commander Joseph Vettel confirmed an American commitment to keeping troops in Manbij. In 2019, CENTCOM was designated as a terrorist organization by the Iranian Supreme National Security Council. The measure was taken in reaction to the U.S. move to designate Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terror group. Topic structure CENTCOM's main headquarters is located at MacDill Air Force Base, in Tampa, Florida. CENTCOM headquarters staff directorates include personnel, intelligence, operations, logistics, plans and policy, information systems, training and exercises, and resources, and other functions. 
The intelligence section is known as Joint Intelligence Center, Central Command, or JICCENT, which serves as a joint intelligence center for the coordination of intelligence. Under the Intelligence Directorate, there are several divisions including the Afghanistan-Pakistan Center of Excellence. CENTCOM directs four service component commands and one subordinate unified command and no fighting units directly subordinate to it, the United States Army Central USARCENT, and the United States Air Forces Central Command USAFCENT, both headquartered at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina, the United States Marine Forces Central Command USMARCENT, headquartered at MacDill Air Force Base, Florida and the United States Naval Forces Central Command USNAVCENT, headquartered at Naval Support Activity Bahrain in the Kingdom of Bahrain. MacDill Air Force Base also hosts a sub-unified command called the Special Operations Command Central USSOCCENT. Two major subordinate multi-service commands reporting to Central Command were responsible for Afghanistan, Combined Joint Task Force 180 and Combined Forces Command Afghanistan CFCA. CFCA was disestablished in February 2007. From that point onward, the International Security Assistance Force directed most U.S. forces in Afghanistan, and a U.S. general, General Dan K. McNeil, assumed command of ISAF that same month. Temporary task forces include the Central Command Forward, Jordan CFJ, which was announced in April 2013. CFJ's stated purpose was to work with the Jordanian Armed Forces to improve the latter's capabilities. There was speculation, however, that another reason for its establishment was to serve as a base from which raids into Syria could be launched to seize Syrian WMD if necessary, and as a launch pad for looming American military action in Syria. On the 1st of October 2008, Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa at Camp Lamanié in Djibouti was transferred to United States Africa Command USAFRICOM. The United States Forces, Iraq or USFI, was a major subordinate multi-service command during the Iraq War order of battle until it was disestablished in 2011. Elements of other unified combatant commands, especially United States Special Operations Command USSOCOM, operate in the CENTCOM area. It appears that Soxent does not direct the Secretive Task Force 88, the ad hoc grouping of Joint Special Operations Command black units such as Delta Force and Army Rangers, which is tasked to pursue the most sensitive high-value targets such as Al-Qaeda and the Taliban leadership since the 11th of September 2001. Rather TF-77, which started out as Task Force 11 and has gone through a number of name, number changes, reports directly to Joint Special Operations Command, part of USSOCOM. As of 2015 CENTCOM forces are deployed primarily in Iraq and Afghanistan in combat roles and have support roles at bases in Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, Pakistan, and Central Asia. CENTCOM forces have also been deployed in Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Topic. War planning The following code names are known to have been associated with war planning per William Arkin. CENTCOM OPORDER 197, Force Protection SOCEURSUPPLAN 1001 to 90, the 9th of May 1989. CENTCOM CONPLAN 1010, July 2003. CENTCOM CONPLAN 1015 to 98, possible support to Oplan 5027 for Korea, the 15th of March 1991. CENTCOM 1017, 1999. CONPLAN 1020 CONPLAN 1067, for possible biological warfare response 
CENTCOM CONPLAN 1100 to 95, the 31st of March 1992. Others listed by Arkin Supplements include Oplan 1002, Defense of the Arabian Peninsula. CENTCOM CONPLAN 1211 to 07, Foreign Humanitarian Assistance Disaster Response Operations was issued in November 2007, and required using the request for forces method via then U.S. Joint Forces Command to supply any required forces. Topic. Geographic scope With the 1983 establishment of CENTCOM Egypt, Sudan, Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia and Djibouti came within the area of responsibility AOR. Thus CENTCOM directed the natural bond exercises with Sudan, the eastern wind exercises with Somalia, and the jade tiger exercises with Oman, Somalia, and Sudan. Exercise Jade Tiger involved the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit with Oman from the 29th of November 1982 to the 8th of December 1982. Israel is surrounded by CENTCOM countries but remains in United States European Command UCOM. General Norman Schwarzkopf expressed the position over Israel frankly in his 1992 autobiography, European Command also kept Israel, which from my viewpoint was a help, I'd have had difficulty impressing the Arabs with Central Command's grasp of geopolitical nuance if one of the stops on my itinerary had been Tel Aviv. On 7 February 2007, plans were announced for the creation of a United States Africa Command which transferred strategic strategic interest responsibility for all of Africa to the new USAFRICOM, except for Egypt. On 1 October 2008, the Africa Command became operational and combined Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa, the primary CENTCOM force on the continent, started reporting to AFRICOM at Stuttgart instead of CENTCOM in Tampa. The U.S. Armed Forces use a variable number of base locations depending on its level of operations. With ongoing warfare in Iraq and Afghanistan in 2003, the United States Air Force used 35 bases, while in 2006 it used 14, including four in Iraq. The United States Navy maintains one major base and one smaller installation, with extensive deployments afloat and ashore by U.S. Navy, U.S. Marine Corps and U.S. Coast Guard ships, aviation units and ground units. Topic. Commanders As of March 2019, Gen. Kenneth F. McKenzie Jr. as commander. He took command from Gen. Joseph Vettel, USA, who took command from Gen. Lloyd Austin, who took command from Mattis, who took command from Lt. Gen. John R. Allen, USMC, the deputy commander since July 2008, who took temporary command when the previous commander, Gen. David Petraeus, USA, left to take command of the International Security Assistance Force ISAF, in Afghanistan on 23 June 2010. Topic: Unit decorations. The unit awards depicted below are for headquarters, U.S. Central Command at MacDill AFB. Award for unit decorations do not apply to any subordinate organization such as the Service Component Commands or any other activities unless the orders specifically address them. Topic. See also Strategic Army Corps Notes